global goals, protecting animals. Urban sprawl is the sprawl or expansion of an urban area. A few negative effects it is having are pollution in general, destruction of habitats for wildlife, and destruction of green spaces. Pollution is one of the biggest problems though. If we run out of food sources and water, nothing can survive. We also have to work on stopping global warming, but that's a topic for another day. A housing development. Notice how it has barely any green space. Wildlife that once lived here has most likely been pushed out by the development. A large city, lots of pollution. The air here has been polluted, keeping many species and probably even many people from surviving here. Notice that it's actually dangerously polluted here. A rural field. It seems to be a ranch or maybe even wheat farm of some kind. Notice how it has much green space and even a forest nearby it. As well as a small amount of development in it. A city with integrated green space. The builders of the city integrated a large area of green space to keep from being too polluted and to support environmental causes. The, this green space helps out the environment as it has both habitat for animals and plants, as you can see in the picture. Now that you've seen some urbanized areas and their wild or wildlife friendly cousins, let's talk about some ways people are fighting against the effect of uncontrolled development and urban sprawl. For example, Singapore has been creating artificial nesting boxes for their oriental pied hornbills. The project was meant to boost biodiversity, and I think it did. Another example, Singapore has also turned almost half its land to green space. The Central Catchment Reserve may be one of the only lost refuges for an endangered bird called the straw-headed bulbul. Los Angeles is also taking steps to protect its wildlife. It has mountain lions, snowy plovers, and, and an endangered butterfly, specifically the Palos Verdes blue butterflies. Also, Many cities that don't have ground space are putting plants on buildings. I know, crazy. People are also creating things called green corridors. Green corridors are large areas of green space in or between cities. Oh, and while I'm at it, here's a few benefits of green corridors. Wildlife habitat. Green corridors are literally wildlife central. Not, not kidding. Anti-pollution, palooza. These things are great for slowing down pollution and climate change. Paths for wildlife. Green corridors bring many benefits, but this is one of the largest. Cooling, they cool down cities. Cool, 
right? Flood control! Plants retain water. Floods are caused by excess water. Plants help prevent floods. All around good for the planet. Love them or hate them, they're definitely good for the earth. For many years, no thought was given to development. They just covered everything in concrete and put the buildings only feet apart. They didn't even think about all the damage they caused to the environment. No room for trees or even grass. The animals had to move. And all the displaced water caused flooding. Fortunately, things have changed. Much planning goes into development, and green space is integrated to give the animals and plants, along with people, a place to live. This footage shows a planned housing development in the making. You can see the undeveloped land, the heavy equipment needed to develop the land, and you can see the houses being built. Many of our planet's natural green spaces are preserved by nonprofit groups to protect it, and also for people to enjoy. Some of these groups are known as foundations, organizations, trusts, preserves, conservancies, and the National Park Service. They acquire land and protect it from development. There are also different types of parks aka national, state, and county parks. People often come to them for recreation, camping, and to simply have a good time. There are also many benefits that come with natural parks, including protection of natural habitat and protection of natural resources. Being in nature also helps with your mental health, and walking barefoot on natural ground is to be good for your health. And now, I'll just let you see the beauty of a natural area, followed by just pictures of animals and just the beauty of nature. I'm sure by now you want to know what you can do. So here's a few things that I've come up with that you can do. First off, don't rake your leaves. They provide habitat for bugs and butterflies and things like that. Second, you can clean you can also clean up a bit. Just just pick up some litter. You can also not litter and encourage others to as well. Educate yourself. This is actually step one of two. Inform others. This is step two of two. From a club or a Zoom or something. It's not that hard. Start a community garden. Again, not too hard. Involve grown-ups. They're part of this too. Also, use less harmful chemicals. Simple as that. Recycle. Ask a teacher to teach you and your classmates about this topic. Build a bird or bat house. 
It helps the environment and it's fun. And is fun. Win win. And finally, try to get adults to vote for people who support nature friendly causes. That's all for this section. Now, on to the conclusion. The planet needs our help. If we don't do anything, we and everything else will die out. Look at cities today. Almost all wildlife has been driven out. We also have the problem that pollution is causing global warming. In conclusion, we must act now. To protect the environment is to protect the planet, is to protect the animals, is to protect everything.